we ask that the public be vigilant. And what that means is to be completely aware of your surroundings. People are scared. A community truly concerned following the stabbings of three people in Davis. Two people have died. A third is now in the hospital fighting for her life. Police say that they're sorting through the tips right now to trying to find a lead to the person or people who may be committing these crimes that happened all at night, all outside. And now businesses and classes at UC Davis are starting to make some changes to try to keep employees, their customers, and their students and staff all safe. And this afternoon, we learned every class at UC Davis after 6 p.m. will now be held remotely starting today, starting tonight. This series of stabbings began last week. A man was found dead at Central Park. And then Saturday night, a UC Davis student was stabbed at Sycamore Park. He also died. Died. And then last night, just before midnight, a woman was stabbed in her tent at 2nd and L Street. She is in critical but stable condition. Now, we don't know the name of the woman who was stabbed, but we do know the names of the first two victims. Yeah, that first victim, David Bro, was a well-known community figure in Davis. They called him the compassion guy. The second victim was student Kareem Abu Najim. He was just six weeks away from graduating. Mm -hmm. And we've received updates now on the Davis police investigation into this series of stabbings and how the city and UC Davis leaders are responding. We have team coverage on the new details. First, we begin with KCRA 3's Ty Steele. He's at the Davis Police Department with the latest. Ty. This is a city in crisis and for good reason, Lisa. There has been three brutal stabbings, two deadly and one with serious injuries in less than a week. The police chief here at the Davis Police Department telling me this is unprecedented in nature as far as the series, but also in the brutality of each one of these attacks. So very alarming for the community as well as law enforcement. A flurry of activity here, not just from Davis police officers and homicide investigators, but many outside agencies. I just ran into a few Sacramento County Sheriff's deputies that have volunteered to assist in this investigation. There are so many leads to track down. FBI is also involved in this case, so they are really throwing everything that they can at this investigation, trying to come up with a suspect or suspects. And for the very latest on that, we go to KCRA 3's Brittany Hope. She is live at Sycamore Park, about two and a half miles from the Davis Police department. This was the site that Golson was just mentioning of the second deadly attack claiming the life of that 20 year old UC Davis student. Brittany, what do we know about the suspect or suspects in this investigation? So today, the police chief said that there aren't any witnesses from that first stabbing that happened Thursday night, but there was a witness, someone who lives right nearby this park, who witnessed the killing that happened here on Saturday night. You can see the memorial that's growing here behind me. There were also witnesses in last night's stabbing. In fact, the woman who was stabbed through her tent last night was conscious enough as police arrived and an ambulance arrived to give her help, and police say she was able to give them a description of the suspect. But still, even with four or five different witnesses in this at this point. They don't know who this person or those people are, and they don't know if this person could be a UC Davis student either. We've redeployed all of our resources. Basically, we've moved all of the patrol forces into 12 hour shifts so that we have more personnel. The goal for Davis police is to be visible, make people feel safe, and also to try to stop another stabbing from happening. The question for many, are police calling this a serial killing case? We've been in contact with the, the FBI and uh, we're trying to get profilers on board uh, to help us make that determination. Police Chief Darren Pytel said he's in contact with authorities in Quantico, Virginia, and spoke with them this morning. Right now, leaders say they're not setting a citywide curfew yet. What would have to happen for the city to create a curfew? So. You know, curfews are an extraordinary measure. And while the crimes were extraordinary and unprecedented for Davis, essentially it would shut down the city. All the businesses would close, campus would close, and people would be confined indoors. Um, that's it. And then we have to actually police that. So if we're going to enforce a curfew, it takes a significant number of police resources. And right now, I'd rather have the police resources out patrolling and uh, trying to solve these crimes. Patrolling parks, homeless encampments, UC Davis, and schools. But he admits he needs help from other officials, too. We don't have enough resources to station an officer at every single school throughout the entire day. We do rely on, on district staff to alert us of anything suspicious so that we can respond to calls for service. 
And we can tell you back out here live again, we're at Sycamore Park. Just next door to us is a school. Luckily, though, more help is coming in. The police chief said just today 30 homicide detectives arrived from Sacramento to help them with this case and that they're currently being briefed. And we know that more help not only from other regional law enforcement agencies across Northern California, but also the federal government are expected to arrive into Davis as the week goes on. For now, we're live at Sycamore Park. Brittany Hope, KCRA 3 News. Yeah, we have witnessed many of those assisting agencies right here live at the Davis Police Headquarters. Brittany, uh, are police following any, any sort of pattern when it comes to this investigation? They are, and that pattern has to do with the timing of when these stabbings happened. We'll have more on that pattern and what they say about it coming up tonight at 6 o'clock, Ty. All right, Brittany Hope, live for us at Sycamore Park, one of the uh, sites of the second deadly stabbings. Thank you so much. Okay, now we go to UC Davis, and this community would not be the community without UC Davis, an anchor in this community uh, by business and also by culture. UC Davis leaders are obviously concerned. We've heard from a number of students in regards to this. They are in fear for their safety as they, it's a very walkable campus. They're outdoors a lot of the time. We just heard from UC Davis leaders. They are instituting a remote learning past 6 p.m. tonight and indefinitely while this investigation is underway. They're, they're trying to uh, limit how many many students are on campus walking around, especially in the evening hours. We did hear from the chancellor and UC Davis police chief, and here is their message to students and staff members at UC Davis. Don't be by yourself alone at night, you know, walking or doing anything else. Be with a group, be aware of your surroundings, make sure people know where you are, and to, if you see anything, to, to get in touch with uh, the appropriate authorities immediately. Our part, police department right here are working uh, hand in hand with the city of Davis. We have our experts, the best that we have, and their full-time job right now is to try to identify and apprehend this individual. Yes, that is the goal, and we are not there yet, unfortunately. Another vulnerable population in the city of Davis is the homeless population. We know two of the victims in this series of stabbings were homeless individuals. One of them deceased, one of them with serious stab wounds after she was stabbed in her tent in the evening hours. For that part of the story, we go now to KCRA 3's Michelle Bandour, and she's joining us live now with what the city is doing to try and reach out and also keep this vulnerable population safe during this investigation. Michelle, what can you tell us? Well, Ty, while crime scene investigators remain on scene here of the homeless camp here at 2nd and L, processing evidence here, you can see they are looking uh, in and around the victim's tent where she was stabbed here just before midnight last night. So while they continue their investigation, the city and police are working together to try to keep the homeless safe. The director of social services and housing, Dana Bailey, tells me that the city is coordinating with providers such as the Davis Community Meals and Housing to get people indoors and safe, especially overnight. They're collecting extra mattresses to put on the floor of the shelter and just fill up the space there, getting as many people as they can into that safe area. Of friends of the victim who also stayed here need to find somewhere else to live, but they're afraid after seeing the suspect last night near their tents. I felt like he was lurking around my tent. I heard some sticks snapping. I heard my tarp snap and I, and I touched the back of my tent. It was tense at first and it loosened up. And I was like, man, like God, just protect us all, man. Next thing you know, I hear her screaming, oh God, help, please, he's here. We need to be protected. We're humans too. Just because we don't have a home and keys, that doesn't make it any less, say, you know, a of a person. at this third stabbing attack here in Davis and police are also looking to the homeless to help identify the suspect. They want to know if anyone had any kind of interaction with this person, whether it was violent or nonviolent. They're looking for any clues so they can help identify this person and get him off the streets. Reporting live in Davis, Michelle Bandour, KCRA 3 News. And we are all, especially the city of Davis, sitting on pins and needles waiting for that conclusion. Michelle Bandour, uh, thank you so much for your live report. We go now to the outpouring of support for one of the victims. A scholarship fund is actually being built right now to remember one of the victims, Kareem Abdu, uh, Abu Najim. He was the second victim killed at Sycamore Park, just 20 years old, six weeks away from graduating when his life was taken. 
He has a bachelor's degree in computer science with honors. He was going to graduate with that. While in college, he was also a full-time software engineer and interned at multiple companies. In honor of his legacy, the Kareem Maji Abu Najim Memorial Undergraduate Student Research Award will provide stipends to support undergraduate UC Davis students doing research. That fund is building toward the endowment minimum of $50,000, and who can forget his father speaking about the kind of person that he was, both hardworking, studious, and wanted to make the world a better place. You know, if there is a silver lining, which at this point we can't even talk about, it is the outpouring of support we've seen from the community of, of Davis. We heard a spokesperson at a press conference earlier today talking about how the community really is coming together. And even here at the Davis Police Department, I'm seeing that amongst our law enforcement community. We are seeing so much outpouring from other agencies to pour in here to cover all the bases, not just when it comes to the investigation, but also the business as usual aspect of running a police department in a city the size of Davis. So. As far as that is concerned, very encouraging. As far as the latest on the investigation, we're still waiting to hear if they can come up with any suspects. There will be a city council meeting tonight at 630, already planned and scheduled city council meeting, but now the focus will undoubtedly be on this investigation, informing the public, city council members asking folks not to come in person, but to engage online. They do want to hear from the public, they want to inform the public, but they want to keep everyone safe and keep as many people off the streets in a minimal capacity as possible, especially in the evening hours. For now, live out here, side, out, live outside the Davis Police Department, Ty Steele, KCRA 3 News, Edie Galston, back to you. Yeah, and one more thing just to point out, Ty, while you're there at the Davis Police Department, the uh, current police chief there, uh, Joe Farrow, former director of the mm -hmm. CHP, so has a lot of deep experience working with the state agency, understanding how state and federal agencies work together, so hopefully that will help tie things together to help them find out what's going on. Yeah, a lot of experts, and again, yeah. they have already reached yeah. out to the FBI to try and get a profiler uh, sent from Quantico to yeah. Davis to start helping them, because they have had to do that before in the past, they said, and they are already working to put that plan in motion. Ty, thank you for anchoring our coverage there from Davis. We continue to follow this as police are looking for the person or people responsible for these stabbings. Make sure you got the KCRA3 app downloaded. It's free to download. Turn on those breaking news alerts so you can get the very latest developments instantly.